Welcome to the Team Carter Family Podcast Adventure Adventures Forever. <laughs> I'm Jen. I'm David. Welcome. You're you. Welcome. You are you, and you are listening wherever and whenever you are. We are coming at you live from our mobile studio, the Team Carter Mobile Studio today. And mobile studio means uh, our, our mobile tr- studio, our trusty Honda Odyssey in a parking lot. Yes, somewhere. now why you may ask. Are these guys in a parking lot, in a van, just hanging out by the river, recording a podcast? It's because the kids are at VBS, and so we are going to take this opportunity to to get in a podcast really fast, really fast as a you know forty five minutes or so. Um, I want to talk through a couple of things, um, mostly. Uh, I totally forgot what I was going to say. While he thinks about what he was going to say. I totally to say, forgot what I was going to say. If totally you are, if this is your first time joining us or this is your 23rd time joining us, welcome. Thank you for being here. We sincerely appreciate you listening. And these are never recorded. So if this is your first time with us, uh, we don't have notes. We don't have a script. We have no idea what we're going to talk about until David starts talking and hits that record button. So this is all... This is all just spontaneous and extemporaneous. Yes. From the top of our head. Yeah. I tell you why I'm distracted because I just got a stupid text message from an agent that I'm doing a deal with right now. And I won't, I won't say much more than that. Uh, but somebody just <laughs> asked a stupid question stupidly. <sighs> and it's so stupid I can't even talk about it. <laughs> um, so, that's happening. But, um, yeah. Yeah. We were going to go into uh, a little coffee shop here maybe later. Uh, apparently, we have two and a half hours. We're not. The coffee shop closes at three. Oh, okay. Sorry. If you're in the Fort Mill area, you should definitely stop by Chatty Kathy's Coffee House um, right on Starlight Drive, but it closes at three. So, you got to get so there we're before not gonna go. Yeah. We're not going to go because it's currently pretty far after three. Right. Unless there's like a special event happening or something. You can also rent it out for a special event. Really, it's event based. It's, All right, so yeah. we were looking up. Let's talk about our um, our last minute trip plan. And we were looking up. So I, I have to go to Charleston for a work thing, in next week, and um, we were looking at making it. You know, making it a full on family like a mini vacay. And we're thinking about going to Camp St. Christopher, which if you don't know about Camp St. Christopher, it's on beautiful Seabrook Island. It's amazing. Uh, it is it is an Episcopal um, Anglican uh, retreat center. You know conference center and they're um, in the middle of summer camp right now in the middle of summer camp right now we were, Jen and I worked here for a couple of summers when we were in college um, there's a guy doing sprints across the hill here it's pretty interesting but so we were looking at pricing for that um, see if we want to do that make kind of a kind of a beach weekend out of it so that's something we were thinking about we just decided that on the way over here. So in the last, like, 15 minutes or so. So I don't know. We might investigate that and see if we can go out there. And if not, um, you can always call ahead and see if they will reserve you a gate pass for your Seabrook Island. And you can just go out there for the day. Enjoy the beach. I don't know if they let you really hang out while summer camp is happening. But probably not. Really probably not. Much. But you could probably go hang out on the beach. And um, we might just do a day trip if reservations are unavailable. So we'll get back to you on that if we are actually coming at you live from St. Christopher. Which may or may not happen because there's limited cell service out there. Which is half the point of going out there. Right. Which is, yeah. To tell you the truth. So Jen and I worked out there from 2010 to 2011 together. And then Jen did two summers out there. Two summers? I did two summers. Two summers, yeah, two summers when I was um, dating David. One when I was single, one when I was dating David, and then we got engaged, and then we got reemployed by Saint Christopher when we were married, newlyweds. Mm -hmm. We'd been married like two months, seven days, two months, eight days, and fourteen hours or something. It was. It became our, our interesting fact. So when you would introduce yourself to a group of kids, group of students that were out there. You would say your name, where you were from, and an interesting fact about you. And my fact was always, 
I would show my ring and I would be like, I'm Jim Carter and shing, sparkle, sparkle. I've been married to David Carter for, and then I would say the date and I would just make a time. Two months, three days, whatever. Right. 14 months, hours. Yeah. yeah. So that's fun. Mm-hmm. So. Twice a week for nine, a week months. for nine months. So <laughs> to that, to, to that end. We are going to be celebrating our 13th anniversary. 13th. Next week, next Monday. Wow. Happy anniversary to us. That's amazing. That's amazing. That is amazing. You're amazing. I'm not sure what to say about it. It's so amazing. Mm hmm. <laughs> I think we both got kind of tired from the day and from that stupid text message I got a minute ago. Um,. So, yeah, our 13th anniversary, I, I I would not have, you know, if you would have asked me back in 2010, is that right? Yeah. It's 13 years? Yeah. We also got married on my parents' anniversary, which was unintentional. It's 12 years, isn't it? This is 2022. 20, we, wait, hold up. We've been married for. 2010, 2011. Let's, let's do some math. 2012, 2013, 2014, 2015, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. 12 years? Have we only been married for 12 years? Guys, it seems like it's been forever. No, I'm just kidding. It's... (laughs) I'm just kidding. (laughs) Well, you know, I think... I feel like that just tells you a lot about our personality right there. Time flies when you're having fun. Time flies, yeah. Time's irrelevant. I I don't really care, but we're going to celebrate us, and it's going to be great. Because in 2020, we went to Arizona for our... For our our Mm 10-year. Last year was 2021, and we did... We went to beautiful Walhalla, South Carolina, and stayed at Lofts Over, Maine, Mm -hmm. after we hiked the Foothills Trail. Hiked a section, not the whole thing, but a section of the Foothills Trail. A section of it. Yeah, that's right. So that was 11. S- that was fun. This is 12. Okay. Happy 12 years. Happy 12 year anniversary. Math is not our strong suit and we don't, we um, don't care. Yeah. <laughs> we don't Look care. Look up what the gift is supposed to be for her. Oh, yeah. Okay. Does anybody do those? Does anybody actually do those past like the first two things? Okay. Let's see. And, if um, not, I mean, if, what is it? Anniversary gifts? If you're not familiar with this, there are... So, I don't know who set these rules out, but they're supposed to be different things? themed gifts for each, each year of the anniversary. That's a great idea. Our traditional and modern guides. So some people got pissed off with the traditional gift giving, and they just came up with their own. So let's see. Oh, okay. Okay. This... Okay. The traditional wedding anniversary gift idea. This is quotable from brides.com. Um, didn't gain popularity until the Victorian era. So, like, what? Late 1800s. Contemporary opinions diverge from traditional lore and believe that each gift should be chosen to gradually increase in value as you invest more time into the relationship. I like where this is going. Serving as a recognition of a successful marriage and often as a reward for the wife. Because happy wife, happy... Life. But really, that's not true. But it, I mean, it is sort of true. But you should both be happy. Anyway... Um, okay, the reference guide below. Oh, this is going to be fun. Okay, this is traditional gifts by year. First anniversary, what is it? Paper. Paper, you got it. Second anniversary. Wood. Fiber. Fiber, just okay. kidding. Third anniversary, Wood. I knew this. Leather. Leather. <laughs> Fourth anniversary Wood. is flowers. Go so wrong. Okay, number five, try it again. The fifth anniversary is... Wood. You got it. So it's furniture. Build your honey a birdhouse or something. The sixth anniversary is candy. Candy. Seventh is copper. Copper. Buy you some, like, um, mule mugs or whatever. Um, let's see. Oh, eighth is bronze. Bronze. What is bronze? I got you a chandelier that's made out of, cast out of bronze because I love you so much. Bronze statue. Bronze statue of yourself. Ninth is pottery. Pottery. Tenth is aluminum. I got you a roll of Reynolds wrap because I love you so much. Go cook for me. Aluminum. Aluminum. Aluminium. Okay. Eleventh is steel. Oh, they get better. Steel. steel okay. What is steel? I forged you a... A set of knives? A set of stainless steel knives? <laughs> Maybe stainless steel counts. I don't know. I'm just like, steel? I got you a stick of rebar. Congratulations. Um, this is so funny. This is why we don't do these, because we wouldn't take them seriously at all. 
And my thing is, you know, you're a blessing to me every day, not just on one day. Every day. So, yeah, bless me every day, not just on one day. Um, let's see. Okay. The 12th anniversary is Silk. Silk. So we're up to Silk now. We're on the Silk anniversary. Silk. What's, what's 13? What I'm things, just curious. 13 is Lace. Lace. All right. 14? Um, 14 is Ivory. Ivory. All right. 15? Um, 11th. Oh, sorry. Whoa. Fifteenth <laughs> is crystal. Crystal. This is when you start getting into all that stuff that you never use. It puts it gets put up in a china cabinet and nobody yeah. ever touches it. Um, sixteenth is wax. Wax. Seventeenth is furniture. Furniture. Eighteenth is porcelain. Porcelain. Nineteenth is bronze again. Bronze, bronze again. gets it again. Double bronze. Wow. Okay. Twentieth is china. China. I think I knew that one too. Twenty fifth. Okay, so now we're we're jumping in. Uh, gaps here. So it goes from 20th is China, 25th is silver. Silver. So if 25th is silver, 30th is wood. Pearl. 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 Oh. Pearls. 35th is coral. 40th is rubies. Oh, we're getting in the gemstones. 45th is sapphire. sapphire. 50th is, come on, you know this. Diamond. Gold. 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 Um, 50th Jubilee. Uh, 55 is Emerald. And 60th, you guys, if you've made it that far, is, you said it earlier. Diamond. Diamond. Right. Okay. So that's the, that is the traditional wedding gifts by year. And they give an entire list of why you should get that. Seem kind of arbitrary, but. I mean. I'm going to start coming up with my own. Yeah, okay, let's Asphalt. look at modern ones. <laughs> Asphalt. I'm running out of things. Fresh cut grass. <laughs> okay, let's Saw look dust. at modern anniversary gifts. Hold on. What else is random? A set of new tires for the van. <laughs> That's what we did, I think, one year. We are like, congratulations, this year, I got honestly. you new tires for the van. <laughs> it might have been your birthday present last year. I don't know. <laughs> there you go. You can tell we're real serious. It's like a thousand dollars. We're real serious about this, people. Uh, okay, okay. This is more of like what? Okay, modern. Here we go. Oh, okay, okay. This is good. Okay, that was the traditional list. Modern. I'll just give you a couple, unless you want me to do all of them. Should we do all of them? We've got we've got do time them for all. all of them. Okay, modern. First year. You got to know what time it is. You. I'm gonna get you a. Uh, uh, a um. A monocle. A clock. A sundial, yeah. A clock. Because you can get a sundial. I'm going to get you a clock. Second is China. China. Third is crystalware. Crystalware. This is modern? This is a modern list because it's different. Okay. Um, Let's see. Fourth is appliances. Appliances. Got you a toaster oven. Fifth is silverware. So in the traditional one, it was wood. Modern is silverware. Silverware. So were, so were people giving each other like wooden forks and spoons, and they were like, "We're going to silverware." I don't know where that came from. Mm-hmm. Um, let's see. Sixth is wood. Nope, they got wood on there. Sixth is wood. Seventh is desk sets. Desk sets. What is that? Like his and hers, like p- pens or pencils or what does that mean? Or like a furniture. Desk set. Desk like set. a fir- furniture. Like I bought you a desk. No. Uh- like a desktop organizer, pens, pencils, calendar, writing utensils. Anyway, keep going. God, okay. Um, you know my reaction to all these. Anyway, um, eighth is linens or lace. That's a good year. Ninth is leather. Tenth is diamond jewelry. Ooh, mm-hmm. okay. The modern list is like, we're bumping this up. Eleventh is fashion jewelry. Okay. What's the difference between diamond jewelry and fashion jewelry? Fashion jewelry is cheap, not real. Okay. Um, Twelfth is pearls. Thirteenth is textile furs. Whatever that means. Eleventh is gold jewelry. Fifteenth is watches. Watches again. Um, Twentieth is platinum. Twenty-fifth is silver. Thirtieth is diamond. Fortieth is ruby. Fiftieth is gold. Sixtieth is diamond. Sixtieth is diamond. Jeez. Okay. And someone has also made a list of flowers that if you just want to, I mean, flowers are kind of expensive now, but if you want to just do flowers instead of gift giving, okay. First wedding anniversary, what flower should you give? Lilies. Think of, no, not lilies. Sunflowers. Think of uh, eighth grade Puppies. crush gram. 
Eighth grade crush grams. Did you ever do those? You would get a... Boutonnieres. Carnation. 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 Okay, first is Carnation. Second, Lily of the Valley. Third is our wedding flower. It was a... Sunflower. You got it. Fourth was hydrangeas. Fifth was... Gerber daisies. Daisies. Yes. Are you cheating? Are you looking at this? No. Sixth is calla lilies. Seventh is freesia. Freesia? Freesia? Mm -hmm. Um, Eighth is lilac. Lilac. Uh Um, Ninth is birds of paradise. Mm, B O P. Um, I wish I knew my flowers. Tenth is daffodils. Mm. Eleventh is tulips. Twelfth is a peony. So you'd be getting me peonies this year. Yeah. Good luck with that. Um, Thirteenth is chrysanthemum. Fourteenth is orchid. Fifteenth is a something by any other name with smell of sweet. You got it. Um, Twentieth is aster. Mm, John Jacob. Twenty fifth is an iris. Thirtieth is a lily. Mm. Fortieth is a. I can't even read that. How would you read that? Which one? Forty is ruby. Glad, glad. Gladulus. Gladulus. Gladolus. Gladolus. Gladys. Gladys. <laughs> she was there. Fiftieth, yellow roses. Why yellow? Yellow roses, and then sixtieth are white roses. Okay, there you have it. Traditional versus modern versus flowery anniversary gifts. You know, song I'm whistling. No. The the, the yellow rose of Texas. Okay. Somebody has put all of those to different emojis too. Should you want an That's emoji remind an That's emoji reminder That's for all of the anniversary gifts? They're doing too much. God bless you if you actually do all those every year. That's an incredible. Wow. That's incredible. You must be a gift giver. That must be your love language. But gift giving is not one of our love languages. So it's true. We're just kind of like. Eh, eh. <laughs> Well, we we do give gifts, but it's just not. But not really. Generally, it's not physical things. It's like new tires for the car. Or it's like trips. We do a lot of trips. It's tri- okay, that is true. We do experience the gift to ourselves is going on a trip. Yeah, like Arizona. That so was wonderful. For this for, for this anniversary, we're not. We're just going to take the day. We're not going to do anything crazy because we're doing a super long road trip in like two weeks after that. That's true. Nineteen days. We're 19 counting days. down. T minus 19 days. Counting it down, babe. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. Our our love languages. So what are the five love languages? If you don't know. If you've never read the five love language by whoever that's by, you should just go. You know who the five love. Y'all know. Y'all know. Really? Who is it? Yeah. I mean, I'm not saying you know who it's by. I'm saying you know what the book is. Okay. Five love languages are. Let me give this person credit. Hang on. By Robert Gary Stevenson. Chapman, The Five Love Languages by Gary Chapman. It's from 1992, so that's why you probably heard of it. Gerald Chapman. Okay, let's All see right. if we can name them. What are the five love languages? I'll see if I name them. I, I got physical touch. Okay. I got gifts, acts of service, quality time. You're going out of order, but okay. Hang on. So I got gifts, acts of service, physical touch, quality time. And don't tell me, don't tell me. Words of affirmation. You got it. Nice. It's five. Okay. Um, and typically, like, after you read the book and then you read about the five different types, whichever love language that you are is also the one that you typically give, right? It's like if... The type that you receive the most is the one that you give the most. Yeah. We'll just use myself as an example. So, when I took the quiz at the back of the book or whatever, or you can take it online, um, I got, like, a three-way tie between quality time... And words of affirmation, and I think acts of service. And so, my highest score, the one that I related to the most, was like words of affirmation. So I need words of affirmation the most, but I also give words of affirmation. And this isn't like to put you in a box of like this is the only way that you express love. Like most people are a smattering of these things. Well, and this, this can change over time too. And it can change over time, right? Depending on what season of life you're in, circumstances, you know, all these different things. Like your patient. Like kids, yeah, you kids new, change a lot. You do new occupation that takes learning a significantly new skill set, and that can push you in one direction. I wouldn't say there's like fundamental sea change necessarily, but right, you do experience change. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah. What's hmm. my love language? See if you can pick mine. Quality time. That's what I get, give and receive. Mm-hmm. I think I'm a physical touch person. And a physical touch person, yeah. I like it when you touch me. I'm touching his shoulder right now. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I like how you had to. I had to. I had to call. I mean, because it's a podcast, so you have to explain what you're doing. <laughs> anyway. Whoo! Okay. There you go. Um. But so yeah. So you're not limited to one way of showing love. You can be a smattering of a bunch of different things. If you. Or so having if a you're hard time give, if you're, communicating okay. with someone, and you think I, I feel like I'm doing everything I'm supposed to do with this person, over here. You know, maybe communicating is the wrong word. You feel like you're having a hard time connecting with someone, and you just feel like I'm just doing everything I, everything I can. This person's just not receiving it. Maybe ask yourself: Are you communicating? Are you giving affection, love, appropriate communication, whatever, in the way that that person is open to receiving it? Maybe you're trying to spend quality time with someone who has absolutely no desire for quality time. Maybe they just want you to do something for them. Maybe they're a gifts person. Maybe you're giving gifts and they don't care about gifts. I, for one, don't really care about gifts very much. That's just me. That's just, that's just how I am. I me would, either, but maybe that's why we're okay with not giving gifts for every would, holiday would, because we're just not gift givers. I would just much rather you do something nice for me or just be nice as, as mm-hmm. opposed to give gifts. But I feel like I feel like uh, acts of service and giving gifts can fall under a similar category, though, because I can bake someone a lasagna as like a acts of service, you know, like a, mom, a mama had a new baby or something, and I brought you a lasagna um, as like an act of service. I wouldn't necessarily say that's like, but it could fall fall under a gift category too. I don't know. I don't know. It's both, both yeah. and. Mm-hmm. That's very true. So yeah, so I guess I would just encourage you that if you don't know your love language, maybe you should take I'm sure there's a bunch of free tests. I'm sure you can Google that. I'm sure you can read the book by Gary Chapman. It's a great book. I feel like every marriage builders or marriage conference or anything we've ever done, that book is like one of the core things that we talk about. Um, So yeah, go see what you are and then have your spouse do the same thing and see what you are. And then see what they are. Mm-hmm. And if you haven't done it in a long time, you know, if you did it back 10 years ago, whatever, mm-hmm. do it again and see if you've changed. Yeah. Because you, either you've changed or you just know more about yourself now. Hopefully you're a little wiser, a little more mature as some time has gone by. And I bet your answers would change a little bit give you more, and give you more insight maybe. Could, could be pretty interesting. Yeah. We also did the Enneagram. The Enneagram. Uh, Which is not necessarily about marriage or anything, but just the Enneagram test. Just just personality types in general. Um, If you don't know that one, there's nine different personality types. And different cones. Again, people are not necessarily crammed into one label or Mm -hmm. what have you. Um, Most people are like a combination of a bunch of different ones. So, And some people are like, I hate tests like this because I don't want to be put in a box, but... Don't put me in a box. Anyway, our, you were in number three. I was a three. And I was a seven. And you were a seven. Was I a strong three and you were a so- strong seven? Yeah. I'm like the optimistic. Um, the, the cheerleader. Enthusiast. And you're the. Successful achiever. There you go. And together we are. The power couple. The power couple. <laughs> which is probably why we're doing a podcast. I don't know. Either that or we just like to hear our own voices. On Maybe. That. I think it'd be ah. fun. I think it'd be fun if we do this long enough, though, to go back and just like laugh about how <laughs> David just broke the car. <laughs> yes, tell them what you just did. I. He was trying to block the sun with the visor and just completely ripped the visor out of the car. <laughs> Our darling children have yanked this visor out and in such a way <laughs> that it only falls out when you do put it at a certain angle. Otherwise, you'd have no idea that it's broken perfectly functional only when you try to actually block the sun with it it only doesn't it only breaks when you try to use it for its intended purpose and i forget <laughs> every six months more. or so 
And we were, I guess, Jen and I were on interstate somewhere, and that happened to her doing 60 miles an hour. And I was like, ah, get out, get out of my face. <laughs> We were okay. We got to a safe location. Okay. We got to a safe location where we could fix it, yeah, but um, I fixed it, it was definitely was okay. hanging down in my face. But uh, <laughs> I was shielding it with one hand off to the side so I could drive. It was terrible, and it just happened again. It just happened again. That's okay. So anyway, the enneagram. <laughs> <laughs> Successful achiever. That's me, and then Jen's the cheerleader. Basically, we should probably take that again because it's been so long. Yeah. Um, that makes me think about I always don't want to tell people that uh, that's a personality type because I feel like it puts pressure on me to, 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 to actually accomplish so something so what happens if I mean I've never I don't think I've ever met a married okay I shouldn't say this I haven't met a married couple yet that had two of the exact same of those numbers like what does that mean if you have both of the same number. I mean, I, I just, know. I guess I just haven't met you yet. So, somebody's not telling the truth. So, or somebody's not telling the truth. I don't know. One is the reformer, the rational, ideal, idealistic type, principled, purposeful, self controlled, can sometimes be a, profession, a perfectionist, which people do not like that term. By the way, no one's perfect, but this is the one, number that's one. That's the one, the reformer. Yeah. If you follow some of the Enneagram, I think I saw one time like, uh, Enneagram and Coffee on Instagram had um, like all the Disney characters put with like the Enneagram tests and one was like Moana. There you go. Maybe if you're one, maybe you're like, oh, I can see that. That applies, but I'm not number one. Two is the helper. Mm-hmm. Like all my nursing people or mm-hmm. all my very compassionate, caring, generous people. Uh, three was the successful achiever, success oriented, pragmatic type, adaptive, excellent, driven. Okay. Um, four was the individualist. Not remember all the Disney characters, so I can't like name all of them. But we I'm should a- look that up. Look okay. that up. Okay. Let's see. Enneagram Disney. This would be fun. Disney princess Enneagram. Disney. Which Disney princess am I? Which Disney? You just want to know what Disney princess you are. Oh, okay. Here we go. Yes, yeah, someone's done it. Okay. One is Moana. The helper is what princess is like a helper? Any guesses? Cinderella. Snow White. Snow White. Snow White. Could be Cinderella too. Um, three is Tiana, the successful achiever. I can see that because Tiana was very driven. I'm a and, Tiana. And That's like, right. I'm going to do it myself. That's and, me. Yep. Mm-hmm. And then four is Alice in Wonderland. Alice of Alice in Wonderland. The individualist. Self aware, sensitive, creative, values individuality and self expression. Feels exempt from ordinary ways of living. There you go. Okay. Um, like the dreamer, I guess. Five is Belle, the investigator. Independent, innovative, a visionary, pioneer, ahead of their time. Can see the world in a new way. Knowledge and understanding are highly valued. That's like your, uh, what is that, INFJ people? Mm, and the other? Maybe. Maybe. Myers-Briggs. Uh, Myers-Briggs. Okay. okay. Six is Rapunzel, the loyalist, committed, security-oriented, cooperative, lovable. Like, you're a loyal person. You're trying to, um, like, be the peacemaker, right? Um, Ariel, the enthusiast. Yes, because Ariel was actually one of my favorite. High five. I just high five Jen. I touched her hand. Amazing. Spontaneous, playful, high-spirited, constantly seeking new and exciting experiences. Yep, that's me. Approaches life with curiosity and a sense of adventure. Yep, that's me. Um, best to avoid uh, negative emotions. That's me. And procrastinates. Oh, that's me. I, I, I took the Enneagram test and I was like, yes, I'm a clear seven on this. No doubts about that. Um Okay, eight is Merida, the challenger, which I feel like people who are eights have a problem with that, but maybe that describes their personality a little bit too. Cause, okay. Because one of my brothers is an eight. Mm. Um, but anyway, and I just, I don't know, I just feel like you're just, the number eights are like self-confident, they're decisive, they're self-mastering, they're heroic, they're inspiring, they value self-reliance to prove their strength. 
there you go. I, okay. And nine is Pocahontas, the peacemaker. Oh, okay. So peacemaker is not a loyalist, but a peacemaker is able to bring people together and, you know, resolve conflicts, stable, trusting, can create harmony in their environment. And actually, this is fun. Um, a lot of nines that we know are married to ones. The peacemaker and the reformer. Okay. Like, it balances out. So maybe a three and a seven balances each other out. Okay. Maybe that describes us. I don't know. And again, again, this is not like putting you in a box. You can be a smattering of things. You might even disagree with all of these, and that's okay. Um, people hate these tests <laughs> because they don't want to be defined. Well, let's just not assume people hate it. I think a lot of people, this stuff can be pretty enlightening. Don't take it all. You know, don't take it all as gospel necessarily, but, you know. Right. Take the good from the bad, whatever, whatever. Uh-huh. Listen. And a lot of twos, a lot of twos balance out the number eights. Or a lot of twos balance out a number five. Because a two is a helper. What it, what? So you could be a lot of different things. But if you're married to a helper personality, then they're going to like come alongside you. And they're going to let you lead, probably. Unless they're also a helper. Which I've never met. Double helpers? Double helpers. What does a three match well with? Um. Well, I'm not on that page. I'm still on Disney Princesses. But, um... Let's see. Which Enneagrams are compatible? Enneagram type 3. I don't want to say compatible because that's not seven. that's not saying the most common. Okay, here we go. This is what we wanted. The most common Enneagram couples. Okay, so someone has done a lot of research on this. Thank you for that. Okay. Gene Watkins. It's not Gene Watkins. Um, let's see. Ads, 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 ads. Oh my gosh, scrolling through the ads. Okay, type 1s commonly play well with 2s, 7s, 9s. Um, let's see. Relationships, compatibility, let's see. People make this their job to like write all this out, by the way. Okay. Ones and nines. So they say the perfectionists, reformers, mar- you know, get married to the peacemakers. Okay, because we said that balances out. Okay, mm-hmm. um, type two ads go away. Okay, um, type twos are the helpers, can also marry the eights because eights are leaders. Okay. So I could see that working out. Type three is it has type three the achiever marrying type one the perfectionist Ooh, that sounds like a dangerous combination right there i mean i don't know type four the artist marries the peacemaker mm. type nine that sounds like a very chill relationship you know but i don't know if this list is like oh okay this was a study based on 457 couples below are the most common combinations this does not mean that they were the most successful it just means they happen in this study with the most frequency. Okay, so, I mean, and I also don't want to, like, pair people up and be like, ooh, that might not work out, because just because it's not our type doesn't mean it might not work out. But, um, let's see, type 5, which is the rational thinker, marrying the type 1, which is the perfectionist. Okay. Um, type 6, which is the loyalist, marrying type 8, which is the leader, or type 9, who's the peacemaker. I can see that. Yeah. Because I kind of put a 6 and a 9 together anyway, so, like, I can see that. A type 7, marrying a type 5, who's the thinker, or type 1, the perfectionist. The thinker, the stinker. Um, or a type 8, marrying a type 9, a leader and a peacemaker. Or a type 9, peacemaker, marrying a loyalist. Okay. Huh. This is obviously a pretty rabbit hole that we could go down. It's a I'm big sure it's rabbit probably, hole, yeah. There's probably entire podcasts that deal with just this subject by itself, I can imagine. Um, and not... I also want to just throw it out there that I've heard people um, in Christian circles say that, you know, oh, don't rely on the Enneagram because, um, you know, Jesus can change your personality or, like, that's that's leaving it open for God to change anybody, for God to transform anybody's heart. And make, you could you could say... I was born with this type of personality, but then God changed me, and now I'm more like fill in the blank. Yeah. So I can see that. So yes, you can take that into account. I just feel like this stuff is very interesting. I don't know. Very interesting. It's interesting. 
feel like it just gives you some insight into your own personality. Oh, that's that's interesting. I didn't think of myself like that. You know, mm-hmm. uh, the, the, there is only so much value in in uh, in navel gazing, <laughs> I guess. Introspection. It's interesting to see things of like um, things to avoid, or like not things to avoid, but like certain things that you could look at with your based on your personality type of like ways that you could set healthy boundaries in yourself if mm-hmm. you're like you know what that's a like that's a push point I probably shouldn't do that and then you know you can set healthy boundaries for yourself true that and and maybe that would you know create you know I don't know it's just good I like it it's interesting and it we've talked a lot about it so yeah it's there's, fun. There's a lot to be done. We did the Myers Briggs. I don't, I don't, Marriage builders. Yeah, I don't remember what I was. That's a whole other. That's, that's a whole other one as well. I think I was the ENFP. The feeler. The feeler. The the the. I rely on emotions. The in, extrovert. But you know what? I feel like now that. I feel like now that we've had children, this is a great, this is a great, like how situations could, how maybe you, you, okay, I shouldn't say things, how you change as a person. So like after having children, I discovered that I really need time alone to recharge. I love hanging out with people. I love hanging out with our family. But I think for me to personally recharge, I think I do need some alone time. Like that's important to Mm me. Yeah. Whereas when you're, you know. Do I need a long time, you think? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> David needs... David needs... Oh, this is something that's interesting. So, I need a couple hours to recharge. Like, maybe, you know, two hours by myself to go shopping. Or, you know, just sit there quietly for an hour and think. Or go for a walk for, like, an hour. And then I'm good. David needs, like, a full, like, 24 hours no, to I, recharge. That's not, you need, that's like, a full true. sick day, quote-unquote, to recharge. That's not true. That is true. That is not, I did not need a full sick day. Only like once every couple months. <laughs> Only once every couple months. There you go. I just need a day to not not be spoken with. Um, <laughs> I don't know. I feel like sometimes I'm kind of clueless about about. Maybe this is just I don't know being a man, but just, I can be kind of clueless sometimes about personality. My my, my own personality type. That's why I asked Jen. And it's just funny. It's funny to hear her perspective on it because she lives with me all the time. Mm-hmm. This is interesting to hear her comment on the things that I do or say because <laughs> she knows me really, really well. Yeah. I I, I probably <laughs> your perspective is probably really funny. A lot of the time, and for for us to be as compatible as we are, let me say this is not something that we walked into this relationship really knowing super well or being experts at by any stretch. We're not experts. We're not perfect we, people. We were when we got married, but still not now. Nope. Um, if you're looking for perfect people, you just need to get off this right now because yeah, it's not hang us. Up. Hang up. Hang up. Don't it's hang up. Not us. Turn it off. That's not what we're doing. Turn it off. Un- unlike unsubscribe because that's not some, that's not what's happening here. Um, we do not argue very much. Um, that's something that's pretty standard for us. We don't, we, we've never yelled at each other. We've never spent a lot of time away from each other. Or, or we've never gotten mad and anybody's left or walked off or. Right. It's just not something that we do. We just, we don't, we don't really take, like. We don't take offense. We don't take, that? yeah. I was going to say, we don't take time. Like, you're not scheduling weekends away from us or a lot of time away from us. You know, you're not like, okay, see you later. I'll, I'll be back in three days. I'm going to play golf with the guys. Be back in. Going to play and golf that, in Alabama. Uh, listen, see you in three days. If you play golf, don't don't take it personally. Unless you're trying to hide from your family, then please take it personally. Um, <laughs> unless you're trying to hide from your please, family. Please, I want to stomp all over your toes if that's what you're doing. Um... But, you know, I just not say it's wrong to have hobbies, because it's not. But my hobbies just don't take me away from my family. And that's, that's mm-hmm. just what that's just what I want to do. I would rather spend time with my family, nine times out of ten. And you give me... Jen says I need a full day, but I, I don't... I disagree with that. Um, how often do I need a full day? Here's what happens with kids, though, especially small kids. Maybe if you have older kids, you can actually do this, but... 
David would want to take like a solid day of like watching TV in bed or something and the kids just like you know do what kids do they run in there they jump on them they tackle them they're like eating you know Cheeto puffs in our bed or trying to you know trying to like disrupt the quiet that David wanted and so it just doesn't happen anymore where you can just like oh I'm gonna lounge in bed for eight hours like you could do that if you how often do I want to do that though I mean once in a while what once like once every quarter, maybe. Once a quarter. Once a quarter. If I had once to put, a a, I hate numbers, but if I had to put a number on once it, I'd quarter. say once a quarter. Uh, so I am due my Q, my Q, Q3 lay-in, basically. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty soon. What you're telling me is, I'm due a lay-around day. Maybe. I mean. Which is funny, because, you know, when we talk about going on family vacations, like, we're both quality time people, so it's probably why we like, in general, spending time around our family. But thinking about this super awesome road trip we're going to take, it's not going to be like a let's lay around by the pool that kind of vacation. That's not what we're going to do. It's not what this is. This is going to be like being mom and dad in different states. Yeah. We're going to take our kids to different national parks so so they can argue in different places. Yeah. Here are our kids fighting at the Grand Canyon. Here Here are our kids kids fighting fighting in Starkville, Mississippi. Here are our kids (laughs) fighting at Dollywood. They won't be fighting the whole time, but it's, I mean... With 67 hours of travel time in the, car, in the car, it's bound to happen. It's going to get intense. And I'm not talking about tense. Yep. Um, well, it is 41 minutes. If you have made it to this point into the podcast, I want to say sincerely thank you for your time and attention. I'm, again, always stunned by the number of people who listen to these. I don't really understand, but we welcome you. We love you. Have a great evening. Good night. Good night.